truth. Now I want you to look at John 18 again and look at verses 3 and following. They're in the garden and the Bible says in verse 3, Judas then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priest and Pharisees comes with lanterns and torches and weapons as if that's going to do anything to impress the God of the universe. Amen? Right. Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? Good proper English, amen. Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. Now listen, I'm a King James guy, but I just want you to know that the translators added he. Yeah. It was there just for a little clarification. I believe it should be there, but I want you to just know that the literal expression is, I am. Amen. I am. Now, by the way, Judas is well aware of what that one meant. Oh, yeah. And so are the other 11 disciples that might have been there. And I'm sure even the other soldiers might be aware of what that expression, I am, means. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them, verse 5, and then verse 6. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Amen. Now, I want you to think about this very logically and very carefully this morning, because we are a church that hopefully, uh, wants to be logical, amen? amen? And we don't want to just, you know, fall for things blindly. But if you were a Roman soldier 2,000 years ago who had just walked into the Garden of Gethsemane with Judas Iscariot, who had just sold out his Lord and Master for 30 pieces of silver, uh, who was about to bind and deliver Christ to Pilate, would you not at least reconsider your agenda after finding yourself flat on your back upon Christ's proclamation of I am? Amen. I mean, think about it. Here are these Roman soldiers. Uh, according to some uh, co commentaries, there could have been 50 to 100 coming in there with Judas. And of course, it doesn't mean anything. Christ could have just said a word that have all been dead. But the fact of the matter is, here they come, they got torches, they got staves, they got swords, and they're coming in there, you know, thinking they're going to impress the Lord. And they say, he says, who do you seek? He says, Jesus of Nazareth. He says, I am. And they fall back. Yep. Look at here. Jesus didn't touch them. Nope. Jesus didn't take his jacket and wave it across the crowd. Nope. Jesus simply said what we read very clearly in the book of Exodus, I am. Amen. Amen. By the way, just to mess with our charismatic Pentecostal friends, just for a brief moment, the foes of Christ always fall back. That's right. The friends of Christ always fall forward. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now listen, don't sit there and say, well, bless God, you think you're right and everybody else is wrong. Listen, I think the Bible's right and everything needs to be judged through the prism of this book. Amen. Don't just go to some church and think, oh my goodness, look at what happened. People started falling back. Well, so did unsaved Roman soldiers, including the son of perdition, Judas. That's right. And it's funny that I don't see any account anywhere in this Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, where any of the friends of Christ fell back. No. In Isaiah chapter 6, when Isaiah sees the Lord holy and lifted up, I see him like this. That's right, prostate. That's right. But I don't see him falling back. And by the way, I don't need to take my jacket off and somehow pray over my jacket and then run it over a crowd and then see a thousand people fall back. That's right. You know where I'm going with that one, right? Yeah. I mean, come on, that's a that is nothing but a sideshow. That's right. It is a sideshow. The foes of Christ fall back. That's right. right. Now it's interesting to me that that's what happened here. And now it would be something for the charismatics. They'd have a little bit of more weight if this was disciples falling back with them. Yeah. But it doesn't say that. It said the ones who proclaimed whom they were seeking, including Judas, fell back. As far as I'm concerned, that's not the crowd I want to fall back with. No. I want to fall forward in adoration and in humility to my Savior. Now, Amen. by the way, if Jesus Christ's declaration of deity was not enough, because that's exactly what it was, I am, then perhaps a demonstration of deity would be more convincing. Now listen to me. If his declaration of deity was not enough, because just saying I am made them fall back. 
Maybe a demonstration of his deity would be more convincing for them. And I want you, I want you to look, look at, uh, keep on looking down at John chapter 18 and look at verse number, look at verse 9. Uh, let's start at verse number 10. Then Simon Peter, he's the fundamentalist of the group, having a sword, drew it. Now, Simon's up, he's always upset at something, right? <laughs> Here comes a bunch of Roman soldiers. They're about to bind his Savior. Right. They're about to bind his Lord and Master. Peter was not going to have any of it. Right. Oh, no, you're not touching him. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Now, in all the gospel accounts, the only gospel that gives you this soldier's name is right here in John. The servant's name was Malchus. Now, okay, now look up here. So here come the soldiers. Here comes Judas. They got swords. They got weapons. They got staves. They got all the things. They're trying to impress uh, and overwhelm Jesus Christ and the disciples. Uh, they say unto him, hey, we're seeking Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus Christ says, I am. Yeah. They fall back flat on their face. They can't even get up because they're under the spell of the presence of God until God tells them to get up. Right. And then Peter, after things kind of settle a little bit, Peter takes his sword and says, you know what, I'm not going to have this. Takes his sword and just starts swiping, and off comes Malchus's ear. Now that must have been a sight, amen? Yeah. <laughs> Blood. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, I mean, that's basically how it's going to happen. Sure. Verse number 11. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword in thy sheath. The cup which my Father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Mm -hmm. Then the band and the captains and officers of the jurors took Jesus and bound him. Now I want, you to look, I want to look at the context of that. John doesn't give us here uh, the context, but look at Luke 22. Just back one more and go to Luke 22. And let's look at the context of what took place there. Luke 22 and look at verses 50 through 51. Luke 22, verse 50. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Now, we already know that's Peter, and we already know the servant is Malchus. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer you this far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Okay, look up here. All right. So the first thing is Jesus says, I am. They fall back they, they, under the power of the expression of deity. The second thing is Peter cuts off Malchus's ear, and it's on the ground. I'm assuming, and, and like a severed body part, there would probably be some blood. And Jesus says, hey, Peter, would you control yourself? No NRA actions right now. There'll be time for that in the future, but not right now. Put that thing back in the sheath, and let me clean up your mess. Puts it back on Malchus's ear as if it's brand new. That's right. Jesus Christ puts an ear back on a man's head without a splint, a compress, morphine, plasma, doctors, nor the assistance of nurses. The great I am simply puts the ear back on as if, as if it were never cut off. That's right. Now let me make this clear. Sin will blind you from receiving or even accepting the truth of God's Word. Those Roman soldiers, including Judas, were standing there and then fell back at the declaration of deity and then were not even convinced at the demonstration of deity. They continued with their agenda. Here's my point. Sin will blind you. That's right. Uh, John Newton, in his famous hymn, Amazing Grace, wrote these words. You all know it. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. 